Screen Junkie Central. Today's episode is brought to you by T-Mobile, the Uncarrier. High five! We We're here live in San Diego. Say, make some noise. What's up, Screen Junkie Central? Woo! Welcome to Screen Junkie Central, a special episode of SJ Universe. I'm so excited because we have the cast of Dirk Gently here, the writers, the creators. This is going to be insane. Before we go, I just want to make sure I've warned you, told you all, uh, if you don't know, we're having an amazing deal on Screen Junkies Plus where we have over 20 shows every week, so much content, stuff from Doug Benson, Kevin Smith, all of our friends, TV fights, so much stuff. Today and this week, you can get a, a deal off, an annual membership, 50% off. I promise it's the best deal you're going to get. Go to ScreenDuckies.com slash plus, offer code SJCentral16. Go do it. You're not, you're not going to regret it. Uh, and thank you so much for coming. This is the kind of stuff you're going to see over at Plus more and more often. How excited are you to, to meet these people? Oh, are there any other Douglas Adams fans in the house? I love these books. I grew up with these books. These are why I do comedy. I'm so stoked to talk to these guys. Let's just bring them out. Let's Enough of it. us talking. Guys, first up, you know him. He's been in here a few times already. I love him. One of my favorite writers, it's Max Landis! Was anyone here last night for what happened? Oh, we'll talk about it. We'll get I am it. still riding that crack high. I was celebrating <laughs> like an NBA player. He saw me. I was so drunk. I was like, I want movie fights. And girls were like, what are you talking about? Max Dark. is the creator, writer, shower, all, all the amazing things of Dirk Gently. We're going to talk all about it. Next up, executive producer Robert Cooper. Come on up, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Great to meet you, man. Have a seat. The man behind Stargate SG-1, Stargate Atlantis, and Stargate Universe. Come on. Uh, next up, he's your Dirk Gently, Mr. Samuel Barnett. Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, Woo. this is Samuel Barnett's first ever Comic-Con. Uh, next up, she plays Amanda and Dirk Gently. I'm so happy to have her. Hannah Marks. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Hannah Marks' first ever Comic-Con. Give her a warm welcome. Uh, and then she plays Farrah Black. Ladies and gentlemen, Jada Shet. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jada Shet's first ever Comic-Con. Warm round of applause, show her what we're all about. I, how many times has this next person been to Comic-Con? A lot. I think he was born here. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Elijah Wood. <laughs> We've got some extra mics on this side. All right. I'm right here. I love this. Thanks, buddy. Guys, this is amazing. You guys are here promoting. I'm so excited. And Joe over there, an amazing super fan as well. We are I've so excited for this show. I forced my way onto this panel. So are we. I'm now afraid. <laughs> Max, I got so many questions. So guys, I mean, tell us, because I know a lot of, we have a lot of Douglas Adams fans and, and fans of the book and the novel. I, and I want to start with you, sort of, Max, because how did this happen? Tell us about it. Give us the sell, like, uh, okay, like from day one? The quick version? The quick version, yeah. Uh, Is I that read, possible? I read Dirk Gently's Holistic Detective Agency when I was 13 at summer camp. I actually read Long Dark Tea oh Time God, he first. I started at 13. This is going to be the long version. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, several years earlier, a guy named Arvin David read it in high school and wanted to put on a play. Douglas Adams came to that play, made a friendship with Arvin David. That led to Arvin getting the rights. They were taken away from him. BBC made a Dirk Gently that is sort of like the books, but there's no weird science fiction or magic. So when the rights went out, when that didn't get renewed, Arvin knew to call this guy because this guy loves those fucking books. And he was like, hey, Max, you seem really, really depressed by the studio system and really, really angry about everything. And I was like, yo, that's my brand, dog. <laughs> and he was like, do you want to do a TV show? And I was like, no. He was like, do you want to do Dirk Gently as a TV show? And I was like, yes. And uh, that, that's sort of where it started. And then Rob made it so that we could actually make a real TV show because I am an adult child. That story actually read like a Dirk Gently novel, too, in ways. A lot of tangential connections. Yeah, that's really true. Uh, how, so, uh, Joe, go ahead. I know you have a bunch of questions. Yeah, OK. So um, okay, I'm a kid that uh, around 12 or 13, I read Hitchhikers, Changed My Life. Uh, Max, I know it's big to you guys. Uh, did you guys have any like particular moment reading either Hitchhikers or Dirks, like a passage or a chapter in that book where you were like, the lights just clicked on, and you were like, oh, this, like, this dude's it? 
Do you have? I mean, I know mine. Go for it. I know mine real easy. It's the moment at the beginning of Hitchhikers, the first time I ever read it, when he, when the bulldozer is coming to wreck Arthur Dent's house. Has anybody read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? And he lays down in front of the bulldozer, and the guys, I believe they take a lunch, and then his friend Ford shows up, and the stakes of the book are not clear. It's called Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, but it's about the demolition of a house. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? And then his friend uh, Ford Prefect shows up and very casually says, I'm an alien, we should leave, because this planet's going to be destroyed in about 15 minutes, so we should go, Earth's over. And just from that kick point, what balls narratively to say Earth gets destroyed in the first 30 of this book. And, and it's not a big deal. It's not the point of the book. The book is not about the destruction of Earth. That's a random incident in the opening of the book. That's Douglas Adams in a nutshell. That's fucking sick. It was a ridiculous laugh. I apologize. So, um, Douglas Adams himself, he was, he's pretty adaptation friendly. Like, I disagree vehemently. Yeah? Well, I mean, ask the actor's question. Okay, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> so, uh, so Dirk Gently is a guy who, I mean, this is a guy who, in one of his books, his arc is overcoming a conflict with his refrigerator. How, how do you portray that guy on, on screen? Oh, um... Describe, describe our Dirk. Our Dirk is um, kind of insane. I mean, he really, really, really doesn't know what he's doing. And he, he would die probably about 20 times in the first episode if he didn't meet Todd. So Dirk has this kind of intuition and kind of hunch about the universe and, and the way things work and he can see connections between things that other people can't see. But actually that makes his life really quite lonely and lonesome. And he's it's that thing, he's actually just looking for a friend. And Todd is going to be his friend, his assist friend, whether he likes it or not. Mostly um, whether or not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's a bro bromance via hijacking. Yeah. Our show could be compared to Sherlock and Watson if Sherlock kidnapped Watson and forced him to do everything. Yeah, I mean, it's, not, it's certainly not a literal translation. Sure. You know, Douglas Adams is kind of the you know, philosophical orgy of the absurd, and... Uh, you know, I think Max has done a brilliant job of capturing that spirit, but I think our show is much more, uh, the, at least the, the, the entrance to the show is much more grounded, much more real. Uh, um, Elijah plays a character named Todd who is, you know, could be you, could be your neighbor, you know, and, and he's the one who kind of leads us uh, into that world. Well, and, if your neighbor is an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> a lovable asshole. Um, and, and, you know, Dirk just kind of drops into his life, and Dirk is that sort of magical character uh, and that, that, that sort of lifts the veil and, and introduces us to those more, you know, incredible aspects to the, to, the, to the story. You know how the new Ghostbusters movie isn't really Ghostbusters, but it's Ghostbusters, and the real sequel to Ghostbusters is the movie The Frighteners? You know what I mean? Amen, by the way. Uh, it, you don't The Frighteners? Yeah. So under, underappreciated under film. This is this is to the books as the Frighteners is to Ghostbusters. Ooh, I'll I take love that. It. That's good. Elijah, I'm curious because you <laughs> always pull only p pick sort of pa projects you're really passionate about. Like you, Wilford, all these amazing things you've done. Like what what was it about this one that, you, that w was important for you? Because this each character's not in the book, in the graphic novels and stuff. Right. Like what 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 struck you? Honestly, it was it was the pilot script, I read the script kind of reluctantly, because I was like, ah. Oh. Because Max's name was on oh, it? No, no, I mean, I, <laughs> no, not at all, not at all. Uh, I was excited to read it because Max wrote it, but I was also Easy like. Easy there, Cyborg Superman. But I was also like, ah, oh, it's a, t a television show, and it's a long, it could be a potentially long commitment, and, uh, uh, but I read it, and I literally had one of those moments. I finished the, 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 the script, put it down, and I was like, fuck. It's so good. I fell in love with it. It was one of those things that was completely undeniable. I'd never read anything like it. Um, it's completely batshit crazy in the best way. You, you, the, the, the first episode sets up these things, but you don't quite know what they mean, and you won't know what they mean necessarily for a little while, but it's, 
it, it's so difficult to describe, and yet at the, you know, at the center of it, it's a, the core of the story is this guy who's had this sort of, you know, uh, awful day, and he meets this detective, or this person who says he's a detective, and they sort of set forth, forth on this insane journey. And I, I just, I don't know. I'd never read anything like it, and I just wanted to be a part of it. It was really exciting. Hannah Jane, what about you two? Like, what was, uh, and Samuel, we'll get you, but uh, was there anything, because your character's also sort of newer, like, how, how did you? Yeah, w when I read the um, pilot, I also, like, there was definitely at least two or three moments where I had to stop. I was laughing so hard that I had to, I had to look, I, di I, didn't, I didn't know Max prior to that, so I had to Google him and find out who he, uh -oh. who he Don't is. Google me. Uh -oh. <laughs> and one week later. <laughs> one viewing of wrestling isn't wrestling later. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's similar. It was just so funny and had so much heart. And even, yeah, my character's not in the uh, book, but um, yeah, the, the character that he puts on the page is so dynamic and so just full of heart and exciting and funny and weird and neurotic and badass all of these things. And one, one of the fun things about the pilot is that uh, there are uh, what, five or six different storylines that are, that are set up and you meet these characters who in and of themselves could be the stars of their own show. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and they seem completely separate. Mm -hmm. And yet by the end of the season, they will all come together in a way that is hope, hopefully satisfying. It's like but, the Big Lebowski as Game of Thrones. But like yeah. Hannah uh, oh. and Jade both play characters who are really are kind of the stars of their own storylines. Yep. Uh, well, for me, I, I get to play the drums and I have hallucinations and I'm agoraphobic and I've got a lot going on. I have some friends named the Rowdy Three. And there are four of them. And there's four of them. <laughs> they destroy everything. Their scenes are so fun to watch and so hard to shoot. They literally show up on set and just smash shit for four hours. These four Canadian actors were, were like, hey guys, you want to just break everything? And they're all like, yes. And, and then they apologize. They apologize. They wear all, they wear we're all so sorry. leather jackets. It's sick. So I figured, like, what other chance am I going to have to get to do something like this? Plus, Max wrote it, and it's incredible. Samuel, what about you? And how about like Dirk? Like, where, how does his detectiveness compare to say Batman or Sherlock? Or <laughs> oh no! I mean, well, th there is no comparison. I mean, if, if Sherlock is all logic, then Dirk is all in instinct and heart and gut reaction and intuition and chaos. Dirk is total chaos. So in the show, things that there's like there's no fat in the show at all. Every single scene is completely necessary, and you'll be watching it going, how does that tie in? Stuff from episode eight, you'll look back to episode one and see where it came from. It's that kind of show. And, and, and I think people will get a lot of... There's a lot of ways of watching this show. You can just kind of let it wash over you, and it will come to the conclusion, and you will be kind of carried along, and you won't feel like you're completely lost. Or you can watch it picking up on every clue and every Easter egg that's in there. And it's, it's going to be very satisfying on loads of levels, I think. Yeah, the first season is one story, and yeah, it wraps up story. at the like end like of the season. Like True Detective, if it didn't switch characters. How satisfying was it, and so this is eight episodes, and then how satisfying was it to, um, to just be able to set out tell one story? Uh, I chose the hardest story possible, because this is Dirk fucking gently. Absolutely. We're dealing with a level of plot, contrivance, and convolution that is so beyond unnecessary. It takes, <laughs> like, if you watch the show, you'll get it, but I remember when Elijah got it. I remember when Rob got it. Has everybody figured out how the mystery works in the first season? Like, yeah. I hate the fact that everybody now says, oh, man, this is going to make your head explode. Like, that's become a cliche. No, no, really. <laughs> no, I'm going to fuck There's you There's no up. other way. <laughs> There's no other way to describe this. Your head will explode. First, blood will come out of your ears, and then it will just literally spray on the walls. What I love it, too, is that it, Max is literally breaking all the rules of screenwriting in this. Like the way but the he things that you're the rules, But the really. things that you're supposed to do I which is read. like basically filter information based on something that you've set up. He doesn't do that. He completely eludes you and which is very much like Dirk. You are Dirk as a writer and you're prevent yeah. you're you're sort of presenting the viewers with a very unsafe and un uh, you know, it's an untrodden ground that people are going to be constantly questioning where they are at any you, given you will, time, which is You will be fantastic. in danger while you're watching. All you I, are going to be in danger. All I care about is that you like the characters and you want to see what happens to them. If you, can it, I just say that a corgi is a lead role? Yeah, a corgi is a lead role in the show. <laughs> yeah. You guys are selling this hard. I'm very excited. <laughs> Who's excited? 
I, I, I'm really, Max, I know we're a big fan of you. You've been helpful on our show. He crushed it on movie fights last night. He's coming back. Elijah, you have as well. Thank I, you. I, I want to see you two go head to head. Oh, I just annihilated nine I think people he in a might row. Annihilate last night. me. That's the only thing. I don't know if I want to go against you. You're so sweet, though. I, I might, know, you know, I might, I might go to the audience, thumbs up, thumbs down, as to whether or not I annihilate you. But I, <laughs> like gladiator style. But I'm so grateful you all guys came here, and thank you so much for doing this. We're so excited for the show. BBC, coming up what, this fall, This fall, right? October 22nd, thank BBC you. America. We love screen junkies. We're so psyched we to be here. We fucking love screen junkies. Yeah. We love uh, you guys. Words not Where's Alicia Malone? Thank you for she... watching me, him, her on Netflix, I, I, brother. I, 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 uh, but also, we got to wrap you guys up, and I want to thank you guys. Let's give them a big round of applause. Thanks, y'all. Derek Chantley, thank you so much. Bye-bye. We're going to do a quick photo with them, and then guys, uh, stick Thanks again to sponsor T-Mobile. With double the LTE coverage, get your Screen Junkies fix in more places. To watch our previous show, click to the left. And to view everything else from Screen Junkie Central, click to the right.